Hello, I'm Keith Howes and I was Features Editor of London's Gay News from 1976 to 1979. I want to talk a bit about television and Gay News' attitude to it. Generally, from what I've read, American uh, gay liberation really ignored television, ignored radio as well. Film it was much more interested in, the theatre, but television, the public entertainment that was commonest to people, was really rather bypassed, I think in a very, well actually a rather arrogant way. But it may just be that many of the people that were involved in gay liberation just didn't watch television. Today, everyone watches television. They watch television in a variety of ways, but television is just part of our life whether we're highly intellectual or whether we just like escapist entertainment. But things were very different back in the 70s. I love television and I remember my first watching of television, which was October 1952, and it was a Hopalong Cassidy movie. And I remember those gorgeous tight trousers that Hopalong wore. Oh, wonderful. How old was I? Five years old, six years old? No, impossible. Rubbish. And then there was the wonderful man that was dressed up as a woman. And I said to my mother, uh, Mummy, how does that man manage to wear uh, women's clothes? She said, oh, he gets a special license from the police. I thought, oh, does he? Interesting. Yeah. I was about six years old then. So television was very important for me. By the 1970s, television in Britain had become um, a very, very important uh, area of communication about homosexuality. Homosexuality appeared in programs like Upstairs, Downstairs, it was in uh, Dallas, it was in all sorts of plays, TV serials, documentaries, etc, etc. However, the way it was portrayed was often highly um, discriminatory. If it had been made about any other minority, it would not have been portrayed in the shadowy, sinister, unsatisfactory way where actually homosexuality didn't work and in the way it was never meant to because the heterosexual majority made sure it didn't work. And I felt that really television should be properly represented in gay news by properly reviewed television programmes. And I reviewed a lot of them, as did other people. But I wanted to start doing a history of television in Britain. And I did an article, which I thought was going to be a one-issue article. It turned out to be a two-issue article. And it was called Watching Gays on the Box. And it went from, I think, 19... 60, something like that, to 1977. And we looked at what television was doing, the way it was portraying gays and lesbians. And I may say, the issue in which the first of those two articles appeared sold more copies than any other issue of gay news. So obviously, there was a real need to discuss television, to open up a dialogue about television. And by the end of the 1970s, suddenly television started getting a bit more adult about gay themes. There was The Naked Civil Servant, of course, that was in 1975, the story of Quentin Crisp. And I interviewed John Hurt about the, uh, the programme, and he said that it had, it had opened his eyes. He said he realised that underneath the British reserve was this grinding, grumbling, groaning mass of lies, contradictions and ambiguities. And if it had done that alone, it would have been a successful programme. But it did more than that. It catapulted Quentin Crisp to international stardom for playing just Quentin Crisp, an individual. By the end of the 70s, we had plays such as Only Connect, which is probably not very well known now, but I think it's a brilliant, brilliant play and daring it would be daring even today in its theme. But the great thing about Gay News was that Dennis Lemon, as the editor, encouraged me enormously to open up both television and radio to discussion. I don't know of any other newspaper of that time for gay people that did that, and I see that as one of its biggest contributions. And I, of course, went on in the late 1980s to write a thousand page encyclopedia with 3,000 entries called Broadcasting It, which was the history of gay broadcasting in the UK. So thank you Gay News for that, and thank you Dennis Lemon, wherever you are.